What's up guys, hope you're all doing well. Everybody really loved the last style of video showing you some of our top foods across Pakistan. So we decided to do another episode similar, except this time in another one of the world's greatest food destinations, Turkey. So this is 36 Turkish foods you're not gonna wanna miss on your next trip to Turkey. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Eh maşallah be, bu şöyle bir de bulumcu. So we're just walking down the street and this man here is hawking something called majun and it's sort of like a uh, Ottoman candy so it's sort of like a lollipop he uses all of these different uh, you can see right here all these different sort of thick syrups and they're all flavored differently and it's kind of falling off the stick but let me try I don't know if I bite it or lick it but I'll try mm. Oh it's soft Oh It's definitely sweet and it's a little bit sour Oh it's good. It's good. Yeah, very good. <laughs> wow, that is really interesting. I've never seen anything like it. Mm. So we have come to get our donor and we are just blown away already from this spot because he has literally probably the world's largest donor kebab I've I've ever seen for sure. I'm not sure if there's a bigger one in the world. Let me know down in the comment box if there is, but this guy is like the king of kebabs. He's got this huge vertical spit with all of that lamb meat roasting and it just smells incredible. We ordered ours up. We ordered the kind, the pide kind, which is with this nice soft bread. There is uh, tomatoes and peppers in there, but it's really all about that meat. So let me dig into this. This just looks too good. Oh, oh, oh man. That is seriously good. So it's not too salty whatsoever. It's really the highlight there. It's the meat. The lamb meat is so ridiculously succulent. This puts the other donor we had at the Grand Bazaar to shame. This is seriously good. That massive lamb spit is just completely dripping with juices everywhere. And I love the bread that this is served in as well. And then a nice little vegetable, uh, green pepper, tomato kick too. Let's go for one more bite. So it is time for baklava and we've popped into this really historic old shop called Gulo Glue and this is one of the most famous brands of baklava in all of Turkey. So they have a really famous shop in Istanbul and the story goes that the owner back in the day went to Aleppo and Damascus to learn how to make baklava brought it back here and kind of pioneered the recipe here in Turkey. And we've ordered up two different kinds there, classic baklava with pistachios. You can see, oh man, it's still warm. That is just stuffed full of pistachios. And then over here, this is midye, which is stuffed with kaimek, so clotted cream. And of course, we've got a little chai as well, fresh out of the oven. And like I said in the last episode, the thing to do is turn it upside down like this because you can see that this is really soaked with all that sugar syrup so it doesn't taste too sweet. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. It's crunchy and chewy at the same time. Those layers of phyllo are so thin. They're like thinner than paper and they just completely crunch when you bite down on it. There is a ton of pistachios on the inside and it's actually not too sweet, but it still has that nice kind of wetness to it. That is really good and I love it when it's warm, fresh out of the oven. Oh man, we might have to get some of this for takeaway. Yeah. So this one is quite a different shape and as I mentioned, this is midye, so it's stuffed full of kaimak, which is one of my favorite things in Turkey. Look at that. 
Wow. So you get that creamy Kaimek on the middle with that one, but because of that, there's less room for the pistachios and less room for the filo dough. I definitely prefer the original kind over the Midier. <laughs> The most famous food to try here in Cappadocia is the testi kebab or pottery kebab. We've got the beef kind, sometimes with lamb, sometimes with chicken, and they basically just put all of the ingredients inside the pottery and then put it in a wood fire oven and that's how they cook it. So we've got onions, I see some tomatoes, there's tons of spices and tons of beef. And we've actually tried this at a couple restaurants here in Cappadocia and it wasn't very good because the restaurants were just very touristy. So I'm interested to try this because that manti was very delicious. Oh, yeah. That one's so much more flavorful than the other ones we've had. Really deep, beefy flavor and a little bit of tomato. Okay, let's go in for a real bite here. I'm gonna get some of this onion too. Mm. Oh man, yeah. That beef is nice and tender. You can definitely taste a little bit of like earthiness coming from that clay pot. And it is quite smoky too. It would be really nice if there's like some potatoes in there because it kind of reminds me of like a home cooked stew. And I know that this is gonna go really, really well with some bread. So take a little dunk in the sauce here. Grab some of the beef like that. Oh man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our first stop today here in Bursa is at this really famous breakfast joint. This place is called Abdul Simitrini and they serve all kinds of different Turkish pastries. So I've got their classic, which is the Simit. Basically like the most popular street food you will see here in Turkey. It's sort of like the Turkish version of a bagel, but honestly it has more of a texture of like a pretzel and you can see it's just completely coated in sesame seeds. They are cooking them fresh in a wood fire oven and we are sitting on the street side with a nice little bit of chai so let's give this a try here mm. oh man wow so many sesame seeds so it's a very dense bread like I said almost like a pretzel but it's also got this very strong flavor of sesame seeds the sesame seeds go all the way around completely coated and you can definitely taste that smoky wood fire oven this is a very typical thing that uh, the regular Turkish person is going to have for breakfast you cannot come to Adana without trying their namesake kebab, the Adana kebab, which is a mince spiced lamb kebab that's flattened out and grilled over charcoal. So we're at this place called Seamus Kebab, Adana Kebab. And we've also been served a ton of salads, of course. So over here, oh, thank you. We've got a salad with some lettuce and some cabbage, parsley, tomatoes. This is onions, parsley, sumac. And then this one's like a really interesting looking puree tomato salad. And then just some extra parsley with lemons. And then back here, I've got the beautiful, beautiful Adana Kebab. So that minced meat kebab and then served with bread that has been soaked in the kebab juices. And then a little onion, tomato, and a pepper. Wow, this looks so good. And so many different things to try, so let's dig in. Okay, let's dig in to the kebab. And I'm just gonna use the bread to pull this apart. Oh man. And I'm gonna make a little kind of a sandwich here with some of the sumacked onions. Put those on top with a little bit of parsley as well. That looks so good. Mm -hmm. We're 
definitely eating a lot of kebabs on this trip in Turkey. And they might all kind of look the same, but rest assured they all taste completely different because of the simple variations in the spices and the way that they're prepared. This one is extremely juicy and very soft because it's been minced up like that. And then the bread has soaked in all of the flavor, which is actually a little bit spicy. And then nice onions with a little bit of a kind of a lemony sumac flavor. Oh man. That is insanely good. Here in Turkey, you have a lot of these things called hans, and they're kind of courtyards, usually off of the bazaar, and we've just come to one han that is home to Yusef Usta's kunefe, and this is a kunefe that they are cooking on charcoal. So using that kadayif and filled with cheese, and then we've got it sprinkled with some pistachios and a ton of sugar syrup as well. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh man, it's served nice and hot. There's a super crispy layer on the top, that kadaif when it's cooked on top of the charcoal. It's nice and crunchy. Then you've got a nice pistachio nuttiness. The cheese is savory, but then it's balanced with the sweet syrup that they put on top of it. Oh man, that might be the best kind I've ever had. Check out that stretch. Oh my gosh, look at how cheesy that is. That is insane. <laughs> Oh man. So we are at this really, really cool shop. This is a pickle shop and this is a Camerati specialty. I've ordered up a pickle juice. So apparently it's uh, very healthy, very good for your digestive system. But this shop is just so cool. Just check this out. They have everything pickled. They've got pickled lemons, pickled uh, peppers, pickled garlic, pickled carrots, um, all kinds of things, you name it. They have it pickled. This is so cool. And I've never actually had a place that has served pickle juice just as is. Of course, I've had pickle juice before, but I've never had it in this form, so let's try it out here. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, yum. Whew. Yeah, as you can expect, that is seriously sour. That just completely shoots up your nose. It's um, definitely very salty as well. You can drink it down surprisingly better than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like really hard to stomach, but actually it's really smooth. Mm. And also, he puts a little bit of chili sauce in it. So there's a tiny hint of spiciness to it. And you can see too, inside, we've actually got two um, pickled, uh, yeah, cucumbers, I think. Oh man. Yeah, or just like a dill pickle. Oh man, this is way better than I thought it was gonna be actually. Mm. So to end our day on a good note, we have left all the tourist sites behind. We are far outside any tourist uh, attraction here in Istanbul, and we have come to get this piece of beauty. This is the Turkish pide. It's sort of like this boat filled with ground beef that has been spiced and then this beautiful egg yolk which has just actually started breaking but I'm just gonna pull this around a little bit and mix that in and just look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. Oh man. And I wish you guys could smell this. It smells incredible. And we've also got a big hunk of butter here which I'm gonna mix around a little bit too and 
This is so fresh. They were just making them out back, similar to the Lamajun, using that wooden paddle to feed them into their oven and they're just pumping these out. This is apparently one of the best pitas you can get in all of Istanbul, and by the looks of it, it is going to be the best pita I ever eat. I'm just gonna go in right here. Look at all that, oh man. I'm gonna try to cut this a little bit so I can get a piece with some of that egg and some of that butter. And this looks very hearty compared to that Lama June. Okay. I might just have to pick this up and take a bite for my first bite. Okay, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> that just coats your entire mouth. The butter, the egg, the oily ground beef, and then that crisp, hearty bread holding it all together. Man, that just completely coated my mouth. Almost like umami. Let me go in for one more bite. I know I'm supposed to cut this up and eat it properly, but I can't wait, it's too good. Oh, oh that's phenomenal. a flatfish similar to a flounder and this is really beautiful looking I'm gonna kind of peel back the skin and you can see all that beautiful meat underneath oh man look at that and we've also been given a plate with some lemons and a couple veggies I'm gonna go in with some lemon on top of this that is a beautiful beautiful white fish give it a little drizzle of lemon and then let me go in and try some of this meat. Look at that. Oh. Wow. We are at the Iskander Kebab restaurant and you can see right behind me here the big kebab on the uh, vertical spit rotating, cooking right on wood fire and he is just carving this thing like a samurai with his big long knife. You can see all that thinly sliced lamb meat on top. You can smell the lamb coming from this. Then they've poured a little bit of a tomato puree sauce on top. It's served with tomatoes and some peppers. And then on the side, we've got this like very thick yogurt cream. And then just when you thought things couldn't get better, they bring out bubbling hot sheep's butter to your table and pour it all over top of the Iskander kebab. And this is all sitting on top of a thin sort of bread that has soaked up all of those juices. It looks absolutely insane. And I just have to go in right away and try a piece of this. So let me grab some of this lamb and I gotta get a piece of bread underneath. You can see there and I'll get some of this uh, yogurt and put it on top. And oh man, this just looks too good. I can't wait to try this. I can smell that butter. That is the perfect dish. There's no way that that can be healthy for you, but I don't care because that flavor is incredible. Such a rich lamb, deep lamb flavor with a little bit of sourness from that yogurt. It kind of cuts through the oiliness of that lamb with that sheep's butter all over top of it. And then of course the bread on the bottom has just soaked up everything together.
it's hiding underneath these thin uh, wrappers. And let me pull these back so you can see that. Oh man, and serve right on those skewers. So these are like custom made skewers, easy to uh, get the meat on there. And I can see just layers of fat and meat and just those little kind of burnt ends. And just look at that, that is some seriously juicy lamb meat. And then served with a nice roasted pepper. And then also we've got a salad here. Um, we've got some onions, it looks like there's some parsley chopped up in there. And then some tomatoes and some spice on top. Okay, I'm just gonna rip a piece of this little wrapper off and then I'm gonna make my own little lamb kebab wrap. And look at that. Oh man, that came off really easily. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. That is seriously one of the juiciest meats I've ever tasted. Completely liquefies in your mouth. It's just got a natural lamb flavor. Man, it's just the quality of that meat and the juiciness. That makes it so good. Let me try one more piece by itself. I love how there's little layers of fat as well. Get this off the skewer. It's still nice and hot. Try that. Oh man. That is mind-blowingly delicious. Our Manisa kebab has arrived. This is just insane looking. Check this out. We have all of the little kebabs that have been charcoal grilled on top of some flat bread. And then it is served with um, tomato puree sauce. And then over here, we have a yogurt uh, sauce. And then back here, some tomatoes and then some peppers. And it is just all smothered in sheep's butter, just drowning in butter. You can see it just coming out of that bread already. And this just looks absolutely insanely good. So I'm gonna cut one of these little kebabs in half. And uh, the way that you eat it is you grab a piece of bread with a piece of kebab and they've cut it up perfectly for you. Dip it in a little bit of that tomato sauce and a little bit of that yogurt sauce. And let's try that. Oh man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is crazy delicious. So many flavors going on there all at once. That little bit of a tart flavor from the tomato puree, a little bit of a sourness from that yogurt, and then it's spiced with one of my all-time favorite spices, sumac, which is almost like a lemony uh, herb. And then that bread, just completely saturated in butter. Even though it's all coated in butter, it's not heavy. It doesn't feel heavy at all. It actually feels very light. And the flavors aren't that strong. I absolutely love this. This is seriously what dreams are made of. What more could you really want? Meat, bread, sauce. Doesn't get much better than this, folks. Oh, man. <laughs> it is my turn to try. Let's start by cutting this up, getting a nice juicy piece of bread. And you can just tell as soon as I squeeze down, lots of butter comes out of the bread. Oh wow. At the very beginning of your bite, you'll taste the smokiness from the charcoal. And then everything else beyond that is just incredible. Wow. I love this. We're stopping for a quick breakfast at Yesmek restaurant to try their Uvarlama, which is a soup that originates here in the south of Turkey. They cook it in the bowl that they serve it in. And this is it right here. It's got a kind of yogurt base, and then it's topped with this mint sauce. And underneath, we've got all kinds of different things. So we've got chickpeas. There are these little balls that are usually made from bulgur, but he told me that they actually use rice here to make them. And then there's lamb. And you can see that beautiful, beautiful green mint sauce on top, mixing with that white yogurt. This is a really unique dish that originates just here in the south of Turkey. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh yeah, that is so refreshing. It's very light in flavor. The yogurt is kind of watered down, so it's not that thick. It has that really fresh mint flavor. And then those balls of chickpeas and uh, rice are almost the exact same texture, very soft, but a little bit bouncy at the same time. Let me kind of search in here for a piece of lamb. Okay, there's a piece of lamb right there. And look at how the swirling colors of the green and white mixed together. That's so cool. Let's try some of the lamb. Mm. 
super tender lamb as you would expect and because it's served nice and hot the yogurt has a very thin viscosity so it's really easy to eat for breakfast i could eat this every day So tonight we are at a very local restaurant here in Istanbul for dinner and we are having a very unique dish that I've never tried before and it is called tantuni and we ordered the version that is called yogurt tantuni so you can see it kind of just looks like a mountain of yogurt with quite a bit of chili oil all over top of it and then lots of chopped parsley but underneath all of this yogurt and oil there is sort of like a tortilla it is actually two of these thin flour wrappers and then and stuffed with beef that has also onions and more parsley on the inside and what makes a tantuni unique is they boil this beef in salt water and then they fry it a little bit in cotton oil so we ordered up as I mentioned the yogurt kind this just looks like such a little scrumptious bite so let's try this out mm. oh, man. Oh, that is so good. That wrapper has a nice kind of elasticity balance to it. The meat on the inside, very tender. And then tangy from that yogurt. The person who worked here, the owner, he mentioned to me, don't cough because it's a little bit spicy. But actually, I don't find it too spicy. And there's a very unique flavor going on in there. Um, and that is from a local spice they use here in Turkey called samak. And it's got kind of like a peppery flavor to it. Let's go in for one more bite. And then a little freshness from that parsley as well. Oh man. Mm. It looks like it might kind of be too like sloppy or saturated, maybe soggy with that yogurt. But the wrapper does a really good job at retaining its kind of texture, elasticity. That is really good. Just the perfect amount of spice. Thank you, man. Get us up. Sen iki tane bir kilo uçundan var abi. Ha bir de orta vereceğimiz bir buçuğumuz var. Hayır. Bir de bir buçuk vereceksin bana. Just one is kuşa ne? Kuşa ver. Wow, smells good. Thank you. One of the best parts about visiting the Mosaic Museum is coming to this restaurant after. So this is just a walk up the street. It's called Halil Usta. And this restaurant specializes in a few dishes. One of them being kushlame, which is a special type of lamb kebab. So this is the special type of kebab meat. It's cooked over charcoal. There's only two pieces of this that come from the lamb. It's the back bone prime cut and then they also gave us this for free this is also lamb and it's kushlame but it's been spiced so this should be a little bit spicy served with bread on the table and we are ready to dig into this so let's taste it all right so let's go in for a piece of this oh my fork just goes right into that no problem it looks extremely juicy <laughs> Wow, that was more than just tender, but not the same tender as the minced meat kebabs where they kind of melt in your mouth. The moment that your teeth sink into that meat, it's just like butter comes out. And this is like pure muscle meat. It's incredible. We walked across town to come to Ali Goad, which serves shalgum, which is a black carrot fermented juice. Now this sounds a little bit weird, but it's actually very popular here in Adana. And this shop 
you can buy it to have on the spot like we are doing but you can also get bottles to take home and it is very popular with the locals so this is it right here and it's just the juice that the black carrot has been fermenting in you get this deep red color and then we've got a whole half of a carrot here look at that and I can feel it doesn't feel as hard it feels like it's been softened a little bit I'm not really sure what to expect I'm guessing it's kind of going to be like the pickle juice we've had in Turkey let's try it out oh yeah Woo, that is amazing so sour super tart not too salty and it's just really got this vegetably root kind of flavor kind of earthy at the same time but extremely sour wow that is phenomenal so it's super cool that they actually serve you some of the carrot in the juice let's try it oh it's still pretty crunchy mm. again just the flavor of that juice a little bit fermented a little bit of funk going on that carrot soft on the other side but then crisp and crunch on the inside yeah This place is seriously crazy. They are cooking the bowls of Bayron over a literal jet flame. It is such a high powered flame that they are cooking these over. And they only cook for a few seconds before they're done, mixing with a little bit of lamb broth. And then they're also making handmade bread here that you can eat with your Bayron. We have it here. We ordered spicy and maybe this is gonna be a little bit too spicy for breakfast, but I don't care because this is so good looking. You can see all of that red chili on top. You can see that pulled lamb, the rice inside. That smells so good. And what you gotta do is put some lemon on top to kind of balance it out. That's what the locals like to do. So lots of lemon and then also Put a little bit of black pepper too. Give that a little bit of a mix and let me just start by trying some of the spicy broth. Oh man, that definitely has a kick, wow. Actually it's not as spicy as it looks. It's just a really strong pepper flavor. You can taste the lamb and you can taste that lemon, but I gotta go in for one more bite and get the whole shebang here. Get some of that pulled lamb, some of that rice, Look at that. Oh man, that is beautiful. Wow, what a way to start our trip in Gaziantep. We've come a little out of our way to the shop that serves boza and boza is a drink of fermented grains and this is an ancient drink that has been popular in Turkey for centuries and we've come to this place called Vefa Boza that's been open since 1867 so this is the last remaining shop serving boza from that era the 19th century and here we have it so they put a little bit of cinnamon on top and you can see that it's this really really thick thick fermented grains. So all kinds of different things in here that are fermented. It's kind of a secret recipe. And let me mix it around a little bit. And I have no idea what to expect this to taste like, but you can see that that texture is really, really unique. Let's try it. Mm. Mm. Oh man, that is good. kebab has arrived this is called Ali Nazik kebab so it's actually got smoked 
eggplant mash on the bottom covered in yogurt and then we've got these three beautiful beautiful kebabs on top lamb kebabs and then sprinkled with a little bit of a chili oil and they cook it in the pan just like the Bayron this morning and I cannot wait I'm going right in look at that that is so beautiful and I'll get some of that smoked eggplant underneath oh yeah that looks incredible Wow, wow, wow. I am speechless. That's gotta be one of the best things I've had in a long time. That just hits all the right notes for me. It's got a little bit of a sourness coming from the yogurt. There's some sweetness and smokiness coming from that eggplant. Little hint of spice and that kebab. I can't even call it melt in your mouth. It just, it doesn't even melt. It just, I don't know what to say. It is the most tender I've ever tasted a kebab. I think that's safe to say. Let's go in for one more bite. Oh man, that is good. Wow. Our next stop is for kebab, and Antakya is famous for their tepsi kebab, which is a kebab that's baked. And this guy is chopping up the uh, lamb with a mix of almost 50 to 50 vegetables, mainly parsley and onions and tomatoes and lamb, and then lots of spices, and he's using a special knife. And uh, man, this guy is seriously fast at chopping the stuff up. The tepsi kebab is flattened out on a tray and then some onions, some oil, and some tomatoes are put on top. And then it's baked in this wood fire oven right here. And it smells incredible in here. We're gonna order one up. This is the famous Antakian tepsi kebab. It's served right in that pan that they were baking it in, in the wood fire oven. We've got some onions, some peppers, and tomatoes on top, and it's kind of ripped apart, but it's got this nice crispy layer on the outside. I'm gonna go in just with the fork and try some by itself, and you can even see all of those vegetables inside. <laughs> That is some juicy lamb. Because it's baked in the tray and then they serve it in the tray, all of that juice is kind of sitting at the bottom there. Just opposite the mosque is Ali Baba, which is a restaurant that's been around since 1924 and they specialize in beans. So we have it here, it's called Kuru Fasulye, and this is a Turkish stewed beans, stewed for about eight or 10 hours with a little bit of chili, and that looks like those are gonna be really soft. And then we also ordered it with pilaf rice, and then of course, Turkish chai tea. But this is something I've been looking forward to. I love stewed beans, I'm just gonna put this right on top of the pilaf and try it like that. Mm. Wow. The beans and the rice almost have the exact same texture, very soft, and I love the flavor. You can taste some tomato in there. It's got a little bit of tartness and acidity, and it's also a very, very little bit spicy, just a hint of spice, but it's really all about the texture and all that sauce that they've been stewing in. You can tell that that's been stewing for hours and hours and hours because you can't get these beans that soft without it. Oh man. That is hearty. And the rice just soaks up all the flavor of that sauce. 
So you can see that there's a little bit of oil on top, but most of that sauce is almost like a gravy. It's very, very thick and hearty. Let me try just some without the rice. It's so rich, deep flavor, hints of spice, yum. You definitely gotta have it with the rice though, it's very rich. Mm. Are you all right, sir? I'm all right, are you? Oh, beautiful. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So for breakfast today, we have come to have Kaimek, which is like a clotted cream. We are at a restaurant that is specializing in this particular dish. And what makes this restaurant really unique is the owner of this restaurant actually has his own farm of water buffalo. And he uses the milk from these water buffalo to make this, the Kaimek. So you can see this nice white dollop of uh, clotted cream here in the middle. It just looks so, so good. And then, completely smothered in honey so all around that is some really good quality honey and this is we tried this yesterday for breakfast and it just blew my mind so i'm really excited to try a place that's specializing in this so let me grab a piece of bread here i'm gonna grab some of this cream and oh wow that's really thick that's much thicker than the stuff we tried yesterday it actually almost feels like butter my spoon I'm gonna put a little bit of this on my bread here and get some honey Oh man, look at that golden honey. It's liquid gold. Oh, oh yeah. That is seriously good. So the first thing that hits your mouth is definitely the richness of that honey. It's not overly sweet, but it's very flavorful. And then the creaminess, almost like velvety smooth texture of that Kaimek in the middle. That is seriously good. That is dangerously good because this can't be good for you. Let's go ahead for one more bite here. I'm just gonna dip my bread right in here. And look at the, just look at the color and the texture of that cream. Oh man. Super good. up is at Zechariah Katmer and they're making Katmer which is this right here. So the way that he does it, he, he thins out this filo dough, stuffs it with some kaimek which is clotted cream, pistachio sugar and then throws it in the oven, cooks it up and it's like a big pistachio pie and these look awesome so let's order one up. This is a fourth generation shop serving just the Katmer and the owner told me that it's the equivalent of Turkish Viagra. I don't know about that, but I do know that it looks really delicious. So it's topped with a ton of pistachios, filled with a ton of pistachios, and it looks super crispy. And the one thing you have to have it with is a glass of milk too. So they served us a glass of milk as soon as we sat down. And they're making these one by one. So each one is handmade. You might have to wait a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go in for a piece from the middle. Let's go with my fingers here. Oh man, it's warm, fresh out of the oven. And look at, you can see that Kaimek on the inside, that clotted cream and all of that pistachio. Wow. It is absolutely beautiful looking. It is these super, super creamy eggs. And we ordered ours with Turkish sausage, which is called sujuk, which is a beef sausage made with cumin and spices. And then you can just see that this has been cooked actually inside of the bowl that it's served in. So I'm gonna mix that up a little bit. There's also green peppers in there and tomatoes. So over here, we've also got ourselves a chai. I'm gonna drop in a nice little sugar cube here. Mix that up. And of course, this is served 
with a huge mountain of bread, sort of like a baguette style bread. So another thing you're gonna want to do with this menamin is add a little bit of salt and pepper. So I'm gonna add some salt in here and add a little bit of pepper. It's not really seasoned before they serve it to you, so you're gonna wanna season it yourself. And this is just super, super creamy. Check that out. Oh man. It kind of reminds me of chili, like chili stew, but I think actually I could add a little bit more spice. They've included some chili pepper flakes on the table. And I'm gonna add a little, just a little bit of this in here. It is smoldering hot. There's oil forming on the top of that. And let me grab some bread here. Rip a piece off. Oh, that's my fork. Oh man, that is such a hearty kind of home cooked comfort food. Man, that's good. We just stopped for the candy, but now we are at our last stop of the day. We're going to be having some seafood. It's called Midye Dolma, and it's these mussels that have been stuffed with rice, and then usually you can sprinkle some lemon juice inside. So we're going to see how it looks. It looks really fresh. We're right on the coast here in Izmir, so everything is fresh. So we've got our final meal of the day, these Midye Dolma, these mussels. And I'm just gonna open this up so you guys can see what's inside. Check that out. Tons of rice, spiced rice, and then the mussels inside there. And what you need to do is just squeeze the lemon directly on top. That's going to be so good. Mm, mm, mm. That tastes so fresh. The spices in there are just blended in perfectly with the rice and the mussel, and uh, the lemon juice is so sour. It's amazing. You can't leave Izmir without having some seafood, and this uh, Midye Dolma is one of the specialties here. Just check that out. You can see that mussel, and then it is stuffed with that rice, little lemon. This is honestly what dreams are made of. Mm. Oh man. Oh wow. So fresh. And this market, so cool. This restaurant's directly inside of it. What an incredible day of eating here in Izmir. <laughs> we are sitting down now at Kardesler Gentik. The owners and the workers here are extremely friendly. They just gave us the full demonstration on how to prepare the Gentik. So we saw them uh, putting it in the oven downstairs, and then we saw them preparing the meat and the mixture that goes on top of the bread upstairs. And what that is is basically cubed beef that has been mixed with um, tomatoes, a little bit of thyme, some salt, and I think onions as well. So we've got ours here. It looks really good. It's kind of like a mini pide that has been stuffed full of all of that uh, minced uh, spiced beef. And then on the side, we've got the classic Turkish drink, Iran, which is like a sort of like a savory, salty-ish yogurt drink. It's very interesting. I haven't had it in a long time, but this looks really good. I'm ready to dig in. Okay, let me rip a piece of the Gentik off. Make sure I get lots of that filling and this just smells so good and it's nice and fresh. Let's try that. Mm. Mm. That is awesome. Such an amazing texture of that bread. It's very doughy. There's a lot of elasticity to it, but then it's all about that meat mixture that's in the middle. A little bit of a tart sourness from the tomato. Very um, like beefy and then very oily and then rich in those spices that they put in, which is mainly just that thyme. It gives it sort of like a fresh herbal, sort of floral kick to it.
So for coffee today, we are at the most famous place to try traditional Turkish coffee. This place is called Mandabatmas. This is a over 50 year old cafe and we just ordered up our beautiful cup of Turkish coffee. You can see there, it is the extremely thick, dark coffee and the way that they make it is pretty unique. The owner actually just walked me through the steps. They mix in the coffee grinds, which are specifically ground to be Turkish coffee and mixes it with the amount of sugar that you order and you don't boil the coffee you actually just bring it up to the right temperature and they use it uh, a special device that's like a little copper pot handheld pot that they use to cook it so this looks like almost like the texture of like melted chocolate or mud oh man Whew. yeah that'll wake you up in the morning for sure that is really really rich it's kind of got a little bit of a bitterness and a little bit of an acidity too. I ordered mine with the medium sugar. It's not too sweet, but it is all about the texture. There's almost like little kind of sandy uh, coffee grinds in there. It's almost gives it like a gritty texture, but very, very thick. Let me try one more drink. Oh man. It's okay? Yeah. Okay. Oturma gel. So we found the kokoreç stall and what kokoreç is, is a traditional Turkish dish consisting of lots of different parts of the uh, lamb. So there is the small intestine that is wrapped around all kinds of different uh, intestinal organs like the heart, the liver, the lungs, the thymus gland, and that is all spiced and then put on a spit and then grilled. So I've ordered it up. It comes kind of in a sandwich here and he, he heavily spices it with some chili flakes. Maybe it's a satar or just thyme and then some salt. So you can see I've got my sandwich here. You can see all of those uh, lamb intestines in there and honestly it smells and looks looks a lot better once you have it in your hand than the way that it sounds, me describing it right there. So let's try it out. Oh. Oh man. Oh, that is delicious. I was kind of thinking that it was going to be a little bit chewy considering the ingredients, but actually it's very tender and very juicy. And there's sort of some little crispy bits in there as well. And honestly, if you can get over the fact that it's just a bunch of intestines, it is really, really delicious. Mm. Cool. Okay, guys. We are at our first tougher breakfast today and we are having something called borek. This is the savory kind of borek. You can also get sweet borek. And we are at this really cool place called Osman Usta. Uh, this is directly inside the Kemeralti market and we are sitting outdoors. Really cool setting and we have our breakfast, which is the borek. It looks absolutely delicious. So basically the way that he makes it is he takes this dough, sort of like a phyllo dough, that he thins out uh, using his hands, very similar to how they make roti chennai or Murdabak. We ordered ours with a specialty here in Turkey, um, pastirma, which is this salted air dried cured beef and then with egg and cheese. And then I can already feel how crispy this is going to be in my hand. So let's try it. Mm. Oh man. Oh, that is seriously good. The dominant flavor there is certainly that pastirma. It is very salty, but not overpowering. It's almost got a little bit of a tartness to it. But my favorite part is definitely the texture of that borek. It is very crispy and there's sort of layers. So as you bite through the layers, they sort of get more of an elasticity to them the farther you go down. Very crispy on the top and kind of chewy uh, further down the layers. Really delicious. I would recommend you get this kind with the pastirma in it. A little bit of a cheesiness to it. Definitely nice and savory. Finish up with... Oh, 
so we found some cover here. It is really coming down out there, but there is a few little restaurants in here serving Godzilla, which is like a flatbread. So we just ordered ours up here. Um, this one we ordered with spiced lamb meat and also cheese. So you can see there's some cheese in there, some white cheese, and this just looks good. We definitely need something to warm up on this cold day here in Istanbul. So let's try the Godzilla. Oh. oh wow, it doesn't look like much, but it certainly is flavorful. The bread is really the highlight there. It's kind of crispy, but at the same time, it has an elasticity to it. The cheese is a little bit uh, salty, and then there's some nice spices going on with that lamb meat there. It gives it sort of a meaty sustenance to it. I'm gonna go in for one more bite here. So what do you think about this market, Sabrina? Super cool market, super traditional, totally covered, but it is pouring outside and it's really cold, but this is a great way to come and warm up inside the market. Finished off with it. So we've got our dessert, this is called Shambhali. We are at a place that has been open since 1942 here in the Camaralti called Meshur Hisaronu Shambhali. And just check these out. These are semolina cakes that have been soaked, completely saturated in syrup. We ordered one with pistachio and then it's stuffed with cream. And then this one is just the regular, but with a little bit of cinnamon on top. And let me tell you, this, this weighs a ton. This is like a brick. Also, I can see some walnuts kind of peeking out the side there. And this is a semolina dough, so let me try it out. This looks really interesting. Man. <laughs> that is rich. Wow. That is seriously dense. Very saturated with that syrup, but it's not overly sweet. The pistachio on the top gives it kind of like a nice nuttiness. And then that cream in the middle, it's almost a little bit of like a sour cream. It's got just a tinge of uh, savoriness too. And man, that is heavy. You definitely can't eat too many of those. I love that though. That is awesome little dessert. Well, not so little though. So this one also has some walnuts too and you can see that he sprinkled a little bit of cinnamon right on top of the cream for this one. So it's a little bit different. And I'm gonna take a bite. Mm. Oh wow. It's actually not that soft. It's kind of hard, but oh my God. It is so sweet and juicy. Wow. That is a heavy dessert. For dessert, we are having the classic Dandurma, which is Turkish ice cream. We're at this really cool shop called Damla. This is like an old school Turkish ice cream shop. And uh, this is seriously underrated. I know everyone talks about Italian gelato, but uh, seriously, Turkish ice cream, you've gotta try it. So you can see we've got three different flavors. We've got blackberry, chocolate, and then sade, which is just like plain, but it's really like vanilla, I think. And it's starting to drip off. And of course, we also got chocolate uh, on the top, chocolate syrup. So let me try it here. Mm. Oh man, so good. I love that blackberry. And it's got this really unique texture, which makes Turkish ice cream different than other ice creams. They use a type of plant resin to give it this really kind of chewiness. It's very unique and very delicious. Mm. Wow. So actually I just found some chocolate chips inside the chocolate ice cream. Makes it even better, makes it more chocolatey. I think the blackberry is a must try here. It's really delicious. So that was very delicious, traditional Turkish ice cream. And it may not be as entertaining to watch them scoop it up here at this traditional restaurant as it may be down in kind of the tourist center, but it is delicious and it is well worth the money. And then back here, we've got the buffalo milk, once again with the honey. You can see that golden honey at the bottom. And let me kind of stir this up to get that honey infused in that 
thick buffalo milk. A little bit sweet for breakfast, but I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, so. Let's dig in. Pure buffalo milk, fresh buffalo milk with the honey. And it is served like piping hot. Should be good. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. Okay, that is just like the liquid form of the Kaimak. And then hot and soothing, super creamy, nice and thick and not too sweet, but you can definitely taste that honey in there. Oh man, that is hearty. It is hearty. We walk back down to the area that we were in earlier. We're between the Grand Mosque and Kozahan behind us, and we've come and sat down and got tea. You can get tea anywhere here in Turkey. Like we're just sitting out in the park, very, very cheap. These are two lira each, and it's just an amazing way to end the evening. Oh yeah, that's lovely. You can have your tea with sugar if you prefer. They do serve a couple cubes of sugar alongside the tea and this is like the ultimate people watching destination. You could just sit right on these tiny little wooden stools and check out all the people coming from the mosque, going around the markets and it's just a really nice way to end the day with some Turkish tea. <laughs> Hello, just one. The shik it's spicy. No spicy. Spicy, spicy is okay. Spicy? Yeah. You move? Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> let here I have another one of the many variations of durum, which is just a wrap here in Turkey. But this one is very unique. You can see the filling. It is called shig kofte. And what that actually means is raw meatball. So traditionally this is a dish that is served raw, raw meat. And nowadays though, because of health standards, it has been turned into a vegetarian option. So actually this mixture is made with cracked wheat, some tomato paste, and tons of spices. He also puts a little bit of lettuce in there and then a ton of lemon juice and also a uh, pomegranate vinaigrette. So it looks really interesting. It's very uh, thick and heavy. And for only five lira, this is quite a good deal. So let me try it out here. Mm. Wow, that has got some serious heat to it. That's probably the spiciest thing that I've eaten so far in Turkey. It really gets your taste buds watering after biting into that. And the texture of that mixture of cracked wheat with the tomato paste is very interesting. It does mimic uh, raw meat. So it's got a little bit of sort of creaminess and then also some little bits like kind of granule and the pomegranate uh, vinaigrette that he puts on top is I think where that spiciness is coming from because he asked me if I wanted that or not and he put quite a bit on and it's got a little bit of a fruity kick to it too. Fresh crunch from the lettuce and nice little sourness from the lemon. It's pretty good. This is the exact same mixture and he gave me a little free sample inside lettuce and he actually squeezed a bunch of lemon juice inside so let's try it out without the dodum wrap. Mm, a little difficult to eat but still delicious. All right guys that's it for today's video I hope you enjoyed if you haven't already hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when we post our next video and we'll see you on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye!